Howdy folks, Doc here with Last Best Tool, and I was watching Caddis Maximus's channel, and he had mentioned something about um, a particular uh, kind of a parallel jaw vice grip type plier made by BMC, um, and he showed a picture of it, and I thought, you know what, I have one of those. Um, it was uh, one of those tools I grew up with. It's been in a box, haven't done anything with it, didn't really think much about it. Um, except I thought it was kind of, you know, when it, when you move to a, you know, a, a nice big old um, vice grip style, one of the more modern styles, uh, this just didn't seem to cut it. Um, and part of it might have been I didn't understand what it was for. I just thought, it, you know, the jaws were way too small and they were also parallel so they didn't grab bolts very well. And I don't know. But anyway, um, I watched his uh, Catus Maximus's video about these and was just kind of fascinated and kind of gained a new appreciation for them. So I've been digging through some of my older tools, you know, sitting in bins and boxes and actually borrowing them from people I gave them to. Um, and then uh, kind of learning about them. So with this one here, the, is the BMC um, was a um, Bonic Motor Company, which I guess was in, you can kind of read it here, maybe. Um, in uh where was this it was I'm looking it up birmingham bingingham new york and that's actually uh, um, a car dealership apparently that had kind of a side hustle of making these kinds of pliers um, and i'm not sure exactly what they're what they were really used for apparently according to Catus maximus you know that they're really good at grabbing flat surfaces and holding it whereas you know regular conventional jaw designs um, on a flat surface only grab the very edge because they approach it kind of at an angle um, uses you know these kind of pressed steel um, pieces here it's an unusual design with the the, uh, the jaws closing parallel um, and that's should be reminiscent you know to some of you who really like these Knipex plier wrenches they do the same thing and they're actually kind of picking up where something like this left off. Um, you know, when this uses a camming mechanism here, whereas this, you know, it's just your thumb strength, but it's a parallel jaw. Um, some of the earliest parallel jaw tools I ever had, this one here, um, you can see it's just pliers with parallel jaws. Um, and the benefit for these, um, I wonder why that's not focusing quite the same, but anyway, there. Um, we used to use these for like holding um, collectibles, coins, things like that, um, just to gently grab them because if they came in at an angle, then they would mar the edges. Um, but anyway, uh, I don't know what happened to the company finally here, but what it seems to be is that this particular company um, sold off its, its patent to another company, so I guess there's still something similar made today. Um, but if you look really close, I don't know if I can get this to focus right on there, um, but right here it says something like patent applied for. Um, let's try that again, wiggle it around. But anyway, it doesn't say patent pending or something, it says patent applied for. And then the, the um, the patent has since expired, apparently, so I guess it's somebody else starting to make something like this. But anyway, it's just kind of interesting to pick up an old tool that looks odd, looks different, and then studying a little bit about the history. Um, it's probably from the 1950s, um, maybe 60s when this was made. I don't have a lot of comparables, um, but they started in the 50s. And uh, it has a, a kind of a unique design that was prone to clogging up. You know, if you got crud in there, um, and you'd had to had to be, uh, you know, okay with this jaw design. And I just remember it not working near as well. So the first time I got a good pair of vice grips, um, you know, these are the new snap-on version. I mean, it was just night and day. Plus, you had a release mechanism here, and these, if you cranked them up um, and closed them tight, you had to pry them loose, you know, with your hand. Well, not too big a deal because they weren't that strong, but just kind of interesting to study a little bit about that. Anyway, um, thanks Caddis Maximus for, uh, you know, bringing that to my attention. I'm going to dig through some of my old toolboxes and see what else I can bring to light. Um, and with that, Doc out.